Let's talk about modal superposition, or sometimes called response spectrum results you can get from visual analysis. In this example, I have a simple two-story, three bay by two bay. It's a moment frame steel members all around. And if we look at load case manager for dynamics, I've set up a mode shape case that's going to extract the five lowest frequencies and use my dead load case as an additional mass. For the response case, I've set up a response spectrum using the UBCS1 soil type. I'm going to apply it at 100% in the X direction. So I've got an X direction type seismic event here. Let's go ahead and look at the results. So when I switch to the results view, I can see that I have my first five modes shown, and they're ranging anywhere from about three quarters of a hertz up to three hertz. Standard statics case is dead. And lastly, we have the response case. So let's go ahead and look at the response case. And when we do that, we see that our response case is a primarily X direction type displacement, which makes sense because that's where our size, which direction our seismic input is in. There are negative and positive signs. For instance, the deflection of the beam goes both up and down here. So what we are doing is we're taking, in this case, the CQC method, and we're using the sign of the first mode to, de to determine the sign that you get from the CQC value, because by default, this, all the, me the methods for combining modes lead to positive numbers. Let's go back to the load case manager again real quick and notice that down here in the definition of the response case, I have selected create signed results. So that's that's the reason for having signs in the results. This is certainly an approximation, but with the method of combination yielding only positive numbers, it's about the best we can do to get meaningful design values. So let's go ahead now and look at a report. And for reports, if we look down near the end of the result tables, we see we have two that are relative to a response analysis. Let's drag those both onto our report here and take a look at what we've got. First off, one of the things that comes to mind is using the first five mode shapes, we're really only getting about 58% of the modal mass contributing to the results. If we were applying loads in the V direction, we'd have well over 90%. So we've got a real issue here with building codes requiring more than this number, certainly. So if you take a look at our response results, it looks like we have almost nothing happening in the X direction until mode shape five. And mode shape five, if we go back to the result view, we'll see mode shape five is at about three hertz. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start my frequency calculation at about two hertz and go from there, noting that these first four don't do much for me for seismic input in the X direction. So how do I do that? Again, back to load case manager, mode shape set that I'm using. Instead of starting at the lowest frequency, I'm going to start at a specified frequency and we're going to make that two hertz. I say, okay. Now let's go to our modal analysis again and or result view. Notice that our mode shapes now start at three hertz and go up to almost six hertz. Has that helped us in terms of, of contributing mass for the X direction? Well, if we look at that, it certainly has. We're up to 96% now, having our case one and case three contributing to the direction we're looking at. So by doing that, we're now getting modal results that we know happen to have enough of the contributing mass. Final report let's talk about that you get in a response spectrum analysis is the response spectrum based shear results table. And for our response case, we're seeing in the X direction, we have a base shear of 372, almost 373 kips. This number is calculated using the signs on the individual modes rather than a direct CQC sum of the square root of the sum of the squares where all the numbers would be positive. This is a conservative way to calculate this number. And this number is what you would normally use to compare to the equivalent lateral force or static force analysis to see if you need to scale or by how much you need to scale your modal results. So notice this value then can be used for checking building codes relative to the equivalent static force procedure.